everyone, and welcome to the podcast. Uh, today, I'm so excited to have with us Frances Cabello, and she is an author and social media strategist and manager for writers. She's written several uh, very helpful books, including Social Media Just for Writers, Avoid Social Media Time Suck, and Twitter Just for Writers. And I also noticed that she has a new author's guide uh, to Goodreads that is now available for pre-sale. And so uh, how that's, ex I'm looking for something like that. So this is exciting. And uh, she also runs the, the great website, social media, just for writers.com. And so hi, Francis. thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, Lorna, this is exciting. Yeah, this is so fun. Uh, and uh, it's just, uh, uh, you know, just like we were saying, you know, before we got started here, but it's just so fun, you know, you're from California and, you know, I'm your Calgary, Alberta, it's just fun, you know, it's just, to be able to chat across the miles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is fabulous. Yeah. Would you just share uh, your story and what inspired you to kind of move into the writing and social media sort of realm? Sure. Like a lot of writers, I started writing very young and I moved into social media because I've been working as a reporter. And then I worked for nonprofits in public relations and communications. And then when social media surfaced, it just seemed to be a natural transition that PR was moving in the arena of social media or social media is within the arena of public relations. And I decided that I really like social media because it was changing all the time. And then the reason why people hate it, right, is the reason why I like it. Yes. Because it keeps me it keeps me sharp and it keeps me interested. Because I'm the kind of person who in the past I would I would get a job and I would feel like, oh my God, this is so hard. And the first year I would just be out of breath. And then after that it's like, oh my God, this is so boring. And so with social media I'm never bored. Yeah. And that's <laughs> I think I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. And that that is so true. Uh you know, uh because I've noticed that like on Facebook, it keeps changing. And I'm amazed at people that can keep up with it, honestly. So, uh, you know, I'm very grateful for people like you that know the <laughs> ins and outs of how it works. It's wonderful. <laughs> and so uh, that, you know, so you, you've written uh, some very helpful tips on your blog and in your book, your book, um, uh, Avoid Social Media Time Suck. I've, I love that book. And I like the title too. That's awesome. <laughs> it draws me in. It does. <laughs> so, uh, you know, would, would you uh, would you break down the the four steps you know that you write about to, that uh, to help writers to be intentional about, about their time spent and you know specific details about social media? Absolutely. I just wrote a new book and it is because I'm publishing three books this year. So I have the Goodreads book for pre-sale now, and then I've already written. I have a new cover and it's been edited another book called Social Media in 30 Minutes a Day. And that'll be coming out probably in June. And in that one, I tweaked the four steps a little bit because I decided that the first step really needed to be focused only on those social media networks where your readers are. Because in the past, I mean, probably just two years ago, I was reading a post on Mashable that said writers need to be everywhere. Well, writers don't need to be everywhere because it's a huge waste of time to be everywhere. Yeah. You know, are your readers on, on Periscope? If they're 45 and above, they probably aren't on Periscope. So why would you spend time learning about live video on a Twitter app? So you need to be where your readers are. And what, what I use as a barometer are the, um, is, is the data coming out of the Pew mm -hmm. Research Center. They they study where people are demographically on social media, and their latest report came out in August of 2015, so just about six months ago. And through that, we can extrapolate that information and say, well, if the, if this if if this demographic is on Facebook, then that means that my readers might be there, or my readers aren't there. So, for example women dominate Pinterest, women dominate Facebook. Yeah. Well, that's a really yeah. good place for romance writers. You know, um, of course, LinkedIn is always a good place for nonfiction writers because LinkedIn is the most valued social media network among professionals. Young people gravitate to Snapchat 
and therefore brands gravitate to Snapchat if they want to sell to teens. And so young, young adult authors should really have a presence on Snapchat and Tumblr and Instagram. So where you so where your readers are determines where you will spend your time. And what that means is that you don't have to be on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Pinterest, Instagram, Tumblr, Snapchat, Periscope. But you don't have to be on all of those things. You only have to be on those social media networks where your readers are going to be. Yeah. And it might just be two or it might just be three. And that's all you have to worry about. And isn't that easier than trying to keep up with everything else? Yes. So. So that's the first step. So the second step is to have good content because people want to sometimes be entertained with their content, sometimes they want to be educated with the content. And so 80% of the time, you won't be posting your own stuff, you'll be posting content that's valuable to readers within your niche or your genre. And then 20% of the content can be the, the content you, you create through the visuals you create, through the blog posts you write, through the books that you write. And then the third step is to schedule. So once you figure out what you're going to put out there, schedule for the day or for the week, and then just walk away. I say walk away from the computer. Just walk away from it. And then in the afternoon, come back for 10, 15 minutes and socialize because socializing is part of social media. And so retweet, share, Go to your Facebook homepage and look at what your readers are posting, share what they have, have posted, comment on what they've posted, retweet, etc. Share on Instagram, repin on Pinterest, and be social. Yeah. yeah. And those are the four steps. And then if you have time, you can go to a fifth step, which is analytics. And it's not as hard as it sounds to go to your Facebook page and go to Insights and look what's happening there, which will probably match what your Google Analytics will say in terms of who's who's liking your page, who's coming to your website, and those are your readers, you know, what sex are they, what gender are they, what um, what age group are they in, does it match what you think, who you think your readers are, and if it doesn't match who you think your readers are, then you might want to have, need to sort of recalibrate your thinking. Okay. That's to match it to what the analytics say. Yeah. So four and a half steps. Yeah. No, <laughs> that's really great. Uh, so, um... Uh, just something you said there at the end just sort of tweaked something in my brain. Do you mind if I just... Uh, yeah. Uh, so you were just saying, um, uh, if if the Google Analytics doesn't match what you find, uh, you know, for the people that are coming on your, on your, on Facebook, is that right? Then you need to recalibrate. How, how does a person do that? Well, if, if you think that you're reaching people from 35 to 45. Yeah. But your Facebook insights and your Google Analytics say you're actually reaching people 18 to 30. Okay. Then you need to think about your marketing messages or the content you're putting out there yeah. and sort of recalibrate your thinking that actually people who are really reading you and really coming to your website is this other demographic. And yeah. so how will that affect the content that you put out? Okay. And then you just keep, t uh, you just yeah. keep a tr sort of tracking that, right? It, yeah. In, in the analytics as you keep changing and tweaking and right? Yeah. What, 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 what I've discovered is that the demographics of people who come to my Facebook page is identical to the demographics that Google Analytics says comes to my, to my website. And so, and that does, and that makes a lot of sense yeah. that who's ever coming to your Facebook page, you know, is probably coming to your website yeah. that they are your readers. Yeah. So, yeah. With the additional information that you get from Google Analytics, well, you get a lot of additional information, but some of it is it will tell you how people arrive to your website. And so for, in, in, in my case, the number one referral source is Twitter. So obviously I spend a lot of time on Twitter. Number two is Facebook. Okay. So I use okay. Facebook a lot. Pinterest is my third source. And so I definitely put energy every week into Pinterest. Yeah. And so what the Google Analytics will also tell you is, you know, what you need to be spending your, your time on in case you don't have a sort of innate intuitive sense about who your readers are and who you're writing for. Yeah. Well, that's really helpful. And so that's that's probably, you know, it's kind of the ultimate goal is that you want these to kind of all tie in together, you know, from the Google Analytics yeah. that, 
you are having these people <laughs> on Facebook yep. and right that are attracted to what you're saying, really your message, right? Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Your message. Yeah. No, that's that's really good. That's and that's super helpful because I wasn't sure how someone would recalibrate that, but that's that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what Question. what what do you suggest then? Uh, you know, so you went through the four or four and a half steps, <laughs> but what do you <laughs> what do you suggest then as far as you know, how much of a percentage of the day's feed should writers share between, you know, text, blog posts, images of sharing their books or other products? And, you know, is there a specific type of post that uh, grabs people's attention more than others? Uh, and I have a lot of questions here, but yeah, we could just start with that. <laughs> okay. So, like I said, 80% of your content needs to be from other sources. 20% can be from you. Yeah. Um, every... Every social media post you put out there really needs to have an image. Do I do this? Not on Twitter always, but I need to. Because what I have found is that my eyes, when I look at my newsfeed on Twitter, my eyes gravitate to those tweets with an image with them. Okay. And so okay. I try really hard to have an image with every single tweet. And I always have an image with every single Facebook post and with every single LinkedIn post and with every single you know, Google Plus share. So you really want to have an image with everything that you send out there. You might just want to have some Facebook posts and some tweets, et cetera, that are just images. And that's that's great too. And I also do that. I, I try to make sure that I have at least one or two tweets a day that are just images because people really like them. And how often was it? What were the other questions you asked? It was a multiple question question. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't very good of me to do that. That's not uh, right. But but you know, is is there a specific type of post? And you and you kind of talked about that bit that grabs people's attention more than others. Well, if you're talking about a blog post, the kinds of posts that really grab people are the the seven steps to a perfect online author profile. The eight steps you should never neglect when blogging. So anything with, with a number in terms of a blog post. And and your blog posts become tweets and they become the Facebook posts. So people really gravitate to anything with numbers, how to. But if you're a fiction author, then you're not gonna be writing a how to. Yeah. So then you want to think about what your readers want to know about. Well you you want to survey them. You can use the free version of Survey Monkey and ask your readers what they want to hear from you about. And so I did. I did this with my own blog, and people tell me, they tell me these are social media networks we want to learn more about. This is what's most frustrating about social media. Whenever I ask them, I, I, I start to survey. I always get a good response. People will let me know what they think. And so I think you need to ask your readers, your blog readers, what do they want to hear from you, mm -hmm. and then provide them what they want to hear. With fiction authors. You might want to write about why did you kill off a character or why did you select a certain setting or what about the characters you were going to write but you decided not to include. You can tell them about what your writing process is. Yeah. So there's a lot of topics you can, you can select. In fact, I wrote a post that I think it's titled um, 38 Blogging Topics for Writers. And if you, if you Google that or, or go to my website and put that in the, the uh, search bar, the post will come right up. Oh, awesome. Topics you, can, you can select. Yeah. A yeah. lot for fiction authors. And, and some for poets, too, I included. Oh, As awesome. well as nonfiction authors. Yeah. So. That is super helpful. Yeah, okay. I'll, and I'll put the link in the, in the, in the blog post. And, and the other thing kind of that goes with this, because you were taught you were talking about uh, images that it's kind of grabs uh -huh. people's attention. But yeah. as for images with, you know, blogging or social media, um, yeah. are there are there websites that you use that, that you recommend uh, that people go to? Yeah. Find images? Right. Because you want to use a lot of images and images can get expensive if you're buying them. Yeah. You can take images, you know, of your, of your of where you like to write of the coffee you like coffee spot you like to go to, your library, it's things that your readers might be interested in. But in terms of all the images that I use for my own blog and social media, the sources that I use are Unsplash, so U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H.com. Yeah. Yeah. They have phenomenal 
photographs and why they are free to use I have no idea but they're phenomenal Pixabay okay, yeah, is a that one. Yeah. source Pexels is another great source um, Morg file is a good source um, Wikimedia can be a good source yeah. so those are at least five sources for yes. free photos and there's some great photos out there yeah. I'm always amazed at the photos that I find. And and so happy. Oh, and death to stock photos. Oh. Okay. When some they'll send you about seven to ten photos you can use. Some will be useful, some might not, but it's 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 good to subscribe. Yes. No, that's really good. Wow, yeah. thanks for all those uh, those are great resources. Yeah. I think that'll really help authors that are listening because uh, I've heard people say that. Where do you find images that, you know, you can do, do you do that too? Like so I'll, I've, I've often gone to Canva to like, if I want to add text onto the photo, yes, I'll just resize it there. I don't know. It's really easy to use. Is that something that you recommend too? Or yes, I use Canva. I've been using Canva for ever since it came out. I've been using it and there's a free version and then there's a for work version. I'm able to get everything I need from the free version, at least so far. Yeah. So I like to use the free version. You can even create your own book cover using Canva. You can create banners for Twitter and Google Plus and Facebook. You can do posts, you can do letters, you can, you can do business cards, you can do just about anything with Canva. Yeah. And it's wonderful. Yeah. The, the caveat that I would provide is that the images that come out of Canva, and I just learned this recently, are very, um, how should I say this? They have a lot of kilobytes, even millibytes to them. So they would load very slowly on a mobile phone if someone's checking your website out on a mobile phone. So you want to compress the images so they are, they have fewer kilobytes. And you can just go to Google and ask and say, Compress your links. Compress your links for images, and there are several really good that, free wonderful. programs. And you just upload your image. It'll compress it like seventy-four percent. It won't change the size. It'll just make it sort of in, in, in layperson's terms less heavy. Yeah. And so it'll load quickly yeah. on yeah. on on a desktop or on an iPhone or whatever. So I've been doing that. Which, because, which is important because there's a lot of people using mobile, right? And you want things to go yeah. quickly. Yes, yeah. The web went mobile in 2014, so we're 2000, so we're two years into a mobile web. Yeah. So you need to make sure that your your website is mobile friendly and that your images load quickly and easily. Yeah, that's excellent advice. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, wow, I'm learning so much from you, Francis. This is wonderful. <laughs> and I'm sure people that are listening are just, you know, I'm sure it's super helpful. So. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. This is something I've heard a lot from, uh, from uh, you know, from writers, and especially first-time writers. But is being genuine and true to yourself important for writers on, on social media? Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything rests on your ability to be authentic. I, I recently came up with an acronym, and it is CARE. So when you use social media, you need to care. Yeah. You need to you do care about your readers and communicate with them. You need to answer all their questions. You need to reply to any questions they may, they may have had, might have. You need to educate and enter, entertain. You need to treat your readers the way you would if you were to invite them out for coffee. You need to be yourself. You need to be a caring person. You need to have an open heart to your to your readers. You just need to care and be authentic, absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. everything rests, your, your whole brand rests on your ability to be authentic. Because that's what people relate to. Yeah, yeah, no, that, and that, to that totally makes sense. I mean, that's what I'm drawn to, too, as like someone just reading through social media or like blog posts or, you know, that's what I'm drawn to, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's innate. I think that we are drawn to authenticity. The people that we are drawn to in terms of friends, I think, are the people who are most authentic in our lives. Yeah. Oh, that's really great. So, 
uh, you know, is so kind of continuing with that, you know, what tips do you have as far as, you know, how much information should writers share? I mean, because there's being authentic and then there's just bearing everything in your life, you know, so is there a line like so what would you say to share and, and, and maybe not to share on social media? Right. What, what, well, I used to teach parents about teens and social media. And so what I would tell them is how I'm going to answer your question, which is to self-reflect before you self-reveal. And so just think about how comfortable am I sharing this information about myself? I'm a person who tends to be reserved. And so I don't share a lot of personal information. It comes out in different ways, like yesterday was, well, this is Teacher Appreciation Week. And so it was really big on Twitter yesterday. And so I said, you know, well, my third grade teacher had a huge influence on me. You know, what teacher had a huge influence on you? So that's, you know, something that I feel comfortable about revealing about myself, that my third grade teacher has such a huge in, you know, impact on me. So you just have to think about what you feel comfortable with. I always cringe when I see people with glasses of wine or bottles of beer in their hand. That's really not what you want to communicate as, as a writer, even though, you know, we know that writers, like anybody, love to drink. Yeah. But you just, you want to be careful with your brand, and you are your brand. And so I would, or some people tend to talk a lot about politics now because it's, it's everywhere. And, you know, whether you're for Cruz, Cruz or Trump or you're for Hillary or for Bernie, some people can go overboard. And so what I would say is, you know, if you want to reveal that, that's okay, but know that you may offend some people. And so be authentic and reveal, but you don't have to be divisive in what you reveal. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm getting, getting an answer to your question. Basically, see how comfortable you are revealing what you want to reveal. I don't reveal a whole lot. And if I do, it's on my Facebook profile. And... That's how I handle it because of my own sense of comfort, discomfort. But everybody's different. Vacation photos are, you know, I, I know Joanna Penn is, is in Malaga and she's sharing photos. And that's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if I were in Malaga, I would probably be sharing photos too because I love Spain. But just see how you feel and see how, see how your readers respond. Yeah. No, yeah. That's, that's really good, good, helpful information. Yeah, like, um, and that's actually, I appreciate that. Like, you know, like you were saying, Joanna Penn's sharing pictures of, of traveling or um, I, I don't mind if, you know, like um, I follow some people on Instagram, but I guess maybe that's more prevalent on Instagram because it's, it is a lot of photos. But um, oh. like it, sometimes people are okay with sharing, you know, um, you know, the birth of a baby and they show a picture of their little baby or, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, but maybe that's more of a Facebook, Instagram thing. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, there are some men on on social media, authors, who really like to um, share pictures of their kids. You know, like Dan Blank in his weekly newsletter always has a picture of a meal of the week and what his son is doing now. And so over the years, I've seen his son grow up. Or um, Mark Dawson is another one who always talks about his kids. And I've seen pictures of his wife with her daughter. And I remember he wrote a post that said, my girls, ah, you know, like, cause he's such a, he's such a father. Um, Nick Stevenson includes pictures of his mm -hmm. child. Um, Pat Flynn always includes picture, a picture of his child. And so I think it's part of their brand that they are family men. And that's why they're doing it. So that's why I say to self-reflect before you self-reveal. Think about why you want to share the picture of your child or why you want to share a picture of yourself with a glass of wine. Maybe you wrote a book about wines. Then it would make total sense for you to have bottles and glasses of wine in, in, your, in, in, in your picture. So it all depends on what your brand is. Mm -hmm. That's what it goes back to. Yeah. No, that's really helpful. So, um, yeah. And, that, you know, the whole author brand, that is impor so important to, you know, think about it, is. It, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, because you are your brand. Yeah. And so I was listening to Jill 
Friedlander speak recently at, at a conference, and he was saying that, you know, that his brand is that he's a heck of a nice guy, yeah. and he's helpful. Yeah. And that is, a ha- that is how I perceive Joel. Yeah. He's very helpful, yeah. and he is a nice guy. And so he makes sure that everything he posts out there, everything he does online, supports that he's a really nice guy, and he's really helpful to authors. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's a great brand to have. Yes. Well, that, that is he said, to talk about Trump or Hillary, you know? <laughs> he's got a great brand going. <laughs> we all love Joel. Yeah, exactly. That's wonderful. Uh, you know, so, uh, so this kind of leads into, uh, you know, since we are, you know, talking about writers, uh, so this kind of leads into writers who have chosen not to use their real name online. Uh, uh-huh. you know, so maybe they have a pen name. How can they still be authentic? Yes, yes. And I'm, I'm sensitive to this issue because women have c- contacted me. They either have a stalker or they're a domestic violence survivor. And so they don't want to use their, their name. So, so it depends on what, on what you've written. And so if you're using a pen name and you write romance, yeah. you can have a lot of fun with that pen name and the images that you put up, yeah. you know, sexy lingerie, etc. cetera, yeah. uh, chocolate, red wine, all those, you know, fancy, fancy um, heels, you know, whatever. You'd have some just, there are some great images that people do with romance <laughs> writing. I'm <Yeah>. so jealous. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, what I discovered was, I have I, ha- I have a client and she's a therapist and her her specialty is in coercive control and domestic violence and what I found is that domestic violence survivors they're on Twitter because they all use different names and sometimes some corny images because they don't want to use their real profile and but yet within their posts they're very authentic to who they are they they provide a lot of information about domestic violence and they're really helpful to each other and they interact with with therapists who, who, who write about the issue and they pour their hearts out to these therapists who write about this issue. And so even if you use a pen name, even if you're not using a picture of yourself and even if you're you're hiding somewhat online, you can still be authentic to your topic, your genre, your 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 niche, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's really good. Because um, uh-huh. I, I, I know a few authors that have a pen name too and I, I think, well, what fun. You know, I just, my question is just how, how do you do that though, you know, is all, but I guess, I guess the, the pen name then becomes a unique brand all to itself, really. Yeah. You know, like Suzanne Lakin, Mm -hmm. she writes fantasy and nonfiction and literary fiction. So she decided to create a whole new brand and that's for her, that's for her romance. And so she has a picture of herself that was when she was younger, and she took a different name. I don't know how she picked her name. And now she has a whole different brand going on Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest with romance. And so she's able to really balance those. Oh, wow. Be, yeah, so she's balancing two brands out there. So you can definitely do it. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's, I mean, that's really neat. Uh you know, I just, I'm yeah. curious about, because, you know, about, I, I'm managing one. <laughs> I just, know. <laughs> That's just, a lot of work, isn't it? I know. And so I, I, you know, I'm curious how someone would do, uh, uh, would do, a, you know, pen name as well. So that's, that's, that's really helpful. Yeah. Uh, are there specific social networks, you know, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, that you've noticed get better traction for certain genre of books? Um, you know, for example, what do you recommend if someone is writing romance, science fiction? I guess we kind of talked about the YA um, or, or thrillers or mysteries. Like, are there certain places where readers, um, you know, go more, or is or is this or is this a, is this a matter of age? Uh, you know, the age of your readers. Well, if you look at the Pew Re- Research Center, all of the social media trends younger. You know, so okay. younger people are on social media pretty much everywhere, especially especially Snapchat, you know, Instagram and, and Tumblr. For Thriller, I know that Mark Dawson, he feels that his readers are 45 and above. Okay. And so his Facebook advertising, that's what he really zeroes in on. I'm sure there are other Thriller authors who have 
a younger demographic. Steampunk tends to attract younger demographics. YA attracts younger demographics, but you know, a lot of older people read YA. A lot of teachers and librarians, they love the YA genre. And then sometimes parents of teenagers will get in on reading YA so that they can talk about the books their kids are reading. So you can have some sort of cross-pollination there. It, again, just goes back to your analytics and looking at what age group and what gender are your, are your readers yeah. and yeah. determining it from there. That's, that's the best way to determine. Um, Instagram is the most popular. Well, it's like the fastest growing social media network. Facebook is the biggest, and so it's hard not to be a part of Facebook, especially with all of the innovations. I was just reading a post this morning that said Facebook wants to replace the Internet, basically. You know, it has, I mean, its video yeah. is as popular as YouTube video. Yeah. And its news is as popular as Googling news on Google. So Facebook is really huge. Yeah. And, and you have a lot of ages on Facebook. You have grandparents and you have some teenagers. So it's hard to it's hard to neglect Facebook. I think a lot of people love to hate Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it is there and everybody is just about on it. Well one in three people are on Facebook. So why would you neglect Facebook? Yeah. Um, Instagram, I you know, I have an Instagram account. I use it occasionally. I don't use it as often as I should and, and, and as often as I want to, but I intend to change that. I also intend to change my use of video. But it's really hard to see yourself on video, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my God, that's going to be my, my barrier, standing to look at myself on video. But video is huge. And so, but, it, you know, you, you can say this about a lot of social media networks. This is huge. This is the fastest growing. This is the biggest. This is whatever. But it has, to, it has to go back to your analytics. Where are your readers? And so just if, because writers already have to squeeze, squeeze writing time into their days with everything else they have to do. It may be a full-time job and families and cooking. And maybe they, they don't do cooking or cleaning because they have somebody else doing it. But it's a lot to write books. It's a lot to be an indie author and market your books. So where do you spend your time? Focus on two or three social media networks. Start with one. Just start with one until you rock it and then go to a second one. Yeah. That's really great advice. Yeah, because we can get we can get sucked into like all of it and then no writing happens. <laughs> you know. So Yeah, the writing and you know and the publishing and and hiring the cover designer and the formatter and the person to edit your book and you know and then to do free days and then to, then, then do you do Ingram do you do create space? It's just there's so many questions. So narrow your possibilities for it social media just narrow them yeah that is that's really that's really helpful uh so um you know as far as content marketing uh, uh -huh. for, for writers um uh you know do you recommend like something like vlogging or or videos or blogging uh you know i guess blogging is easier because that's text writers are used to text uh -huh. right so yes. um and that's why I stopped podcasting, yeah. because I wanted to go back to writing books. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, so content marketing. Content marketing can be in any form. It can be blogging and just doing a blog. I mean, look how successful Joel Freelander has been, and he continues to blog. Yeah. So he doesn't have a podcast. He does a little bit of video, but yeah. it's mostly blogging. And you look at Joanna Pam. She started with blogging, and now she... She does her podcast every week, so that's replaced her blog. Yeah, and yeah. she just like just like you're doing, she skypes the the you know the audio, and then so she has a video that goes to YouTube, and then the audio that goes to the podcast, and so she's rocking the audio podcast thing. So everybody does it a little differently. Some people like to do slide share. Those are probably people more in business who write books. Okay. They like to do okay. slide share. Yeah. So yeah. whether you are just writing text for, for blogs, whether you're just doing audio, for podcasting, whether you're doing video, whether you're doing a slide share, whatever you do, do it. Yeah. And put out your best content. And I was listening to a blog, no, a, um, a webinar, because I listen to a lot of webinars. I listen, to a lot of, I listen to a webinar by Jane Friedman, and she was saying when you write guest posts, write your best stuff. Yeah. 
And so think about that because part of content marketing is writing for other people. Like I've been a, a guest writer or a contributing writer for Joel's blog for two years now. And so I do my best stuff for him. And I wrote a post recently for Joanna Penn. You know, I put a lot of energy in it. I wrote a really great post on visual marketing. And now I'm preparing one for Jane Friedman. So write your best stuff. Yeah. Write your best stuff for other blogs, yeah. for high traffic yeah. blogs. Yeah. Oh, that's really also, great. Also, put advice. stuff on your own. Yeah. <laughs> put stuff on your own. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, uh, you know, sometimes as, as writers, we're quieter, we're more, <laughs> we're more introverted. Uh, I'm very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm very introverted. <laughs> well, but you're 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 so good at talking with people. I can tell because you're doing such a great job. Uh, uh, so you know, sometimes we we gravitate to tech stuff. You know, like blogging, or instead of yes. uh, you know, because that's just we're sometimes scared to put ourselves out there. I guess would be the reason, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm terrified of video. Yeah. <laughs> But you're you look great, and you're doing so you're doing so good. You're so natural and authentic. I just love it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I need to hear more, 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 more. Oh, doing the, doing the podcast was so difficult for me, and but I know I need to do video. I know this is a year I'm going to do video. But um, but to be honest, when when Joanna Penn interviewed me, she did video, and I couldn't watch it. <laughs> I was. I started to watch it. Oh no! And I called my husband into the room. I said, "Look at me! Is that how I really look and sound?" So I think it. We have to get. We have to get over ourselves. I have to get over myself. Oh, I, I'm the same way. <laughs> I don't. I don't like to watch myself either. But I. But I. I. I, I get it when I when I hear people say, for example, with video. Uh, I get it when people say, "Well, I, I like to see people's expressions and." And, and how they express themselves and even even just how they look. And, and I get that because, you know, when I'm meeting someone in person or I'm going for coffee with them, I like to, I don't know. See, look, I'm just using my hands right now. <laughs> so, you know, I, that, just, I don't know why. I like, like using my hands. <laughs> but I, I, I like to see how people... Uh, I don't know. I feel more connected. I think is the thing. I feel more connected. Like looking at you face to face, I feel more connected uh -huh. with you, chatting with you like yes. this. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's important for readers to see us. Yeah. As much as I would rather do screen share videos and never show my face, <laughs> never show my face. You know, I know that I have my face has to come out once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And you look great. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, uh, so we're talking about content marketing, uh, but you did, uh, so that kind of going along with that, you wrote uh, a book called Blogging Just for Writers. And yes. I just, oh, I love that book. I'm going to read it again because you have great resources, helpful tips in there, and um, just excellent ideas for like images and all of that. So, uh, you know, would there be some reasons for writers to have a blog, um, you know, authors do create websites. I mean, every author should have a website, but should they take it another step further and, you know, blog? And, and how, how often should they write a new post? You know, there's a lot of debate about this on the internet. And, and I don't know, if, maybe I have taken a side, but Jane Friedman will say, if you're a fiction author, you don't need to blog. Yeah. And Joanna Penn will say, Joanna Penn, who does, has blogged, I mean, has a blog. Yeah. But on her J.F. Penn brand, which is her thriller writer, she doesn't blog on, on that website. She blogs on the Creative Pen, okay. Okay. which is really for authors. So do they need to blog? I think you need to blog. I really do. It's an easy way to keep your, your website updated. It's an easy way to stay in communication with your readers. Of course, you'll be in communication with them on social media. If, if, if that's how you're using social media and you should do social media that way, it's a good way to find out what your readers are thinking and what they want to hear from you about. It's just, you know, Joel Freelander would say, yeah, everybody needs to have a blog. I kind of side with Joel Freelander. I think that fiction authors can do a lot 
with with a blog. If you look at The Martian and how successful that was, yes. that that author he blogged his book. And as he was blogging his book, people, scientists wrote into him and said, no, 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 you got the science wrong on this. And they helped him perfect the science. Wow. And so he built his platform. And so by the time he finished the book and did all the corrections and made all the changes that readers told him to make, he had a platform. So then when he indie published it, because he didn't have a publisher, he was huge. And then he got a publisher and then he got a movie deal. Wow. And so if as a fiction author you're wondering if you need a if you need to have a blog, I would say, yeah, I kind of think you do. Because there's been a number of authors that I've heard interviewed on podcasts and they will say that they started out writing short stories for their blog. And that's how they grew their platform. And then when they published their anthologies, people wanted to see the final versions. So I would say that, yeah, you should blog. And if you can, blog every week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, I, I can see that. I, uh, um, I, I like to read, even if, you know, say, say like fiction author that I, you know, I love uh -huh. reading uh, romance. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, uh, so like, uh, I, I like it when they just, it doesn't even have to be, you know, something crazy they're just talking about oh you know what i just thought of this character and they can write about that character and i'm fascinated yeah. actually to, to read about that <laughs> yeah yeah there's somebody that i know who who lives locally where I, where I live in california and her name is sharon hamilton and she's she's a romance writer and she started out because there was a storm and she 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 went somewhere she'd never written before and she just started she was stuck in this dorm room it was I think it was like call it college graduation and she was stuck in this dorm room for a weekend and so she just started writing and then she started publishing and she was blogging and she became popular through a blog because then she connected with other romance writers and they started sharing blogging responsibilities and writing for each other's blogs and within four years Sharon Hamilton was doing great yeah. She yeah. was a New York Times and USA Today bestseller because one of her stories was included in an anthology and that made it into the New York Times bestseller list. And so she's done exceedingly well wow. with her wow. romance writing in a matter of four years. And blogging was a huge part of that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, and I can I, I can see that. I, I, I really connect with uh, people that write about just even their process of writing or, you know, uh, I just like to see, you know, how they're doing that. And so, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because wouldn't it have been great? I mean, like I'm a fan of Hemingway. I know it's not popular to like Hemingway anymore <laughs> if you're a woman, but I, I do. I like Hemingway. And wouldn't it have been great to be able to have a glass of wine with him and find out more about his life? Yes. You know, or Virginia Woolf or to, you know, now we have, social media so we know about Joanna Penn and we know not about Mark Dawson and maybe we know about you know Nick Stevenson yes. and so but how great it would have been back then when we didn't have social media to meet these people and talk to them I think people want to know about you because people read your books they want to know about you the author yeah yeah and that makes actually total sense sure uh, yeah. yeah what are uh, some ideas that you know that you've either seen or uh, you know uh, or just what you would recommend for writers to get their blog noticed by more readers. So, um, you know, how, what would be like a practical strategy, uh, that brings their together, their content and the focus of their readers and their own personality. What would be sort of a mixture of that, putting that together, uh, you know, to get their blog noticed, I guess. Keywords. And, and nobody likes hearing that, but it's keywords and keywords, is, it sounds like a fancy term, but it isn't. It's just words that a reader would put into a search bar to find you. And so start using your, that search bar and start looking for what keywords people would use to find your website and then start using those keywords in your blog titles and in your blogs. The other thing is to do guest, guest posts. That's why I write guest posts for people. When the Romance University contacted me, Romance Writers University contacted me, and they asked me if I would write a guest post, I said, absolutely. 
I love writing guest posts. Uh, like I said, I write for Joel Friedlander every month for the past two years. I'll, once in a while, I'll write a guest post for Jane Friedman. I wrote the post recently for Joanna Penn. I used to write guest posts for Nina Mir. I used to write guest posts for The Future of Ink. So as much as you can, write guest posts. Yeah. And if you can't yet get on high-traffic websites, then go to your colleagues. Because the, the beauty of social media is that if, if you're a romance writer, other romance writers are not your competition. They are your colleagues. Yeah. If you write nonfiction, yeah. other nonfiction writers are your colleagues. If you write thrillers, other thriller writers are your colleagues. Start contacting them on social media. Uh, retweet their stuff. Blog for each other. And keep going. Yeah. 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 And I really, and, I really like that. It's like we're, yeah. you know, uh, where did I hear this before? But, like, it's, you know, we're just, it's like a... A co-opetition, I guess. Like we just, you know, we just kind of all getting. It's like a big community. I don't know. I I see it as just sort of we're all just friends and we're just <laughs> sort of helping each other along. I guess it's what it feels like to me. <laughs> it is absolutely. I remember I I I had the good fortune to meet Joel Friedlander at at a meeting at a local chapter of the independent. Book Publishers Association, so there's one for the Bay Area, and that's where I met him, and I remember going up to him, and he said, coming out with a book, why don't you write a blog post for my blog, and I said, sure, and then I asked him about book designers, and he turned me on to a book designer in Scotland that I use, and then we slowly got to know each other online, and once in a while, I'd see him at a conference or something, and then when he put out a call for um, guest bloggers, I answered it, and I got selected, so just network, network online. Um, I met Jane Friedman on Twitter. I met Joanna Penn on Twitter. I met Joanna. I met Penny Sansaveri on Twitter. So all these people, you can just meet them online and get to know them. Tweet their stuff, comment on their blogs, get to know what their blogs are like, and try to get on the high traffic blogs. Yeah, you know, do your yeah. best to try and get there because maybe you have the best tips for um, marketing romance or marketing YA and wouldn't Jane Friedman like a blog post like that so think about it and try, and try to get on there but first get to know their blog yeah leave comments yeah. on their blogs retweet them yeah well that's yeah. that is uh, really helpful uh so okay just kind of uh just kind of a last question here many many first time writers okay so they're you know you they're hearing all your wonderful information and tips, but they might be, as first-time writers, feeling a little overwhelmed by all of this. Uh, so what, what, what do you recommend as sort of a simple starting point for newer writers? Start. It's so easy to get, to get overwhelmed on social media. And just start with one social media network. Just pick one, whether it's Instagram or Facebook. Facebook is good because if you have a Facebook page, you have great analytics that are free. Pick a social media network and just learn everything you can about it. And after about six months, then try to add a second one. That would make sense for, for your readership. And just, just do that. So on the first year, you might only focus on one or two social media networks. And that's all you do. You post every day and you respond to your readers, you ask them questions, you put visuals, and just focus on that. And all the other buzz out there, just try, if it doesn't have to do with what you're trying to learn with, with the social media network that you're focusing on for those six months, then just ignore it. Yeah. yeah. Ignore it. And just focus on that one. And then add a second one. And then just keep with those two. And then if it makes sense to add a third, add it. If it doesn't, then don't. Or if you don't have time, don't. As long as you are on two social media networks where your readers hang out and you're you're rocking your presence there, that's enough. Uh, this has been so helpful, uh, you know, for people that are just either new writers or maybe they're, you know, struggling to get their, you know, social media presence out there. So that's really great. So would you, would you share about... Uh, um, kind of like what you do and um, to help authors and then where people can uh, connect with you online? Sure. You can find me at my website, socialmediajustforwriters.com. That'll take you right to the blog. And 
there is a free ebook that I give away called Twitter Just for Writers. It's 52 pages. So if you, you're still learning t- Twitter, you'll learn a lot about it by that, that book. What I do is I handle social media for writers. And so some people, well, let me back up. Some people just need me to set them up on social media and then they want to fly with it. And so I set them up. Some people just want some training sessions. So I have an app that I use. They can see my screen and I can do training sessions. Some people want me to handle their social media for them. And so then we decide on which social media networks make the most sense and for their budget and come up with a program. And then I just handle the social media for them. And so that's sort of the three things that I do in addition to writing my blog and writing my books. Oh, that is, that's awesome. And I, I, I can't wait to read your, your new book about Goodreads. That's something I've been actually wondering how in the world do I do this? Cause I know I'm not doing it right. So, <laughs> So I'm sure you're fine, <laughs> but it's just it's super helpful, and I just I love your other books too. So, uh, and I'll put uh, you know links in the show notes for all of uh, all your books and your website, and uh, I just I think it's just super helpful. So thanks so much, Francis, for you know taking oh, thank your you, time. Thank you, Lana, and thank all your listeners. I oh, thank them. Oh, thank you for listening to me. Yes. <laughs>